It's no secret that southwestern Pennsylvania is one of the least diverse regions in the United States in terms of our demographics. And for employers, that poses a real challenge because so many companies, especially those who have customers all across the country, they want a leadership team. They, they want a group of employees who kind of look like and, and understand the people they serve, that they sell their goods and services to. There's enough talent here in the city of Pittsburgh that we can look within to ensure that African-Americans get positions in city governments, county, nonprofits, and other businesses. Often, our diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts are diluted, and we don't have an insight on how we can help a population, specifically the needs that they have. We felt this was unacceptable. We decided to do something about it. And that's how Corporate Equity and Inclusion Roundtable came about. In response to that, aimed at dealing with the employment of black people from entry level to the C-suite and all positions in between, and to support black entrepreneurial development in the region. I've known Tim Stevens for a very long time, uh, dating back to even my days when I was with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And uh, Tim and I have often talked about how we can continue to improve uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion among the Pittsburgh corporate community, not just the sports teams, but how the sports teams could be a real leader uh, in this space. You know, the DEI space is always evolving, continuing to, you know, make progress and in inroads. Um, so I really think that the CIR playbook provides a lot of insight and, and help that maybe a lot of DEI professionals otherwise wouldn't have. So my first impression of CEIR, I was really impressed with the number of people that Tim was able to bring to the conference and to the table to discuss hiring African Americans within our region. He's been talking about this playbook for a number of years with me, and uh, it just uh, was a possibility for all of us to come together as three sports teams with me moving to the Pirates with David Morehouse. And we're all going to work together as we move forward to do what Art said, which was start putting some meat behind the Rooney Rule and implementing it uh, across the Pittsburgh region. And our friends still at the Penguins, we were able to come together and really unite in terms of promoting the playbook. It was produced in response to a negative. And often negatives present an opportunity for a positive. The Pittsburgh region, not the city, but the region was identified as 40th in the nation with regard to the conditions of the black working poor and black children. One thing about the playbook is it really speaks to bringing in black people and not just the lower level positions, but really us being considered for all positions. When I looked at it, I looked at it as a great guide. I looked at it as an answer to some of the issues that corporations have and small and minority owned businesses have as they seek to do business with each other. And so there's a real need for this kind of a, a, uh, a, of a program to help them find a way forward. Among the biggest positives from something like this is, is improving the diversity of the thinking and the leadership within organizations across our entire region. And our participation with CEIR, it was just, it was what we had to do, what we needed to do. Um, it's part of our culture to have diversity, equity, and inclusion. The playbook really gives us an easy pathway to the things that we need to do that are specific to our black and brown communities. And I think that one of the things that helped us was doing an audit to see where we were prior to the introduction of the playbook. So having an idea of you know what areas we're doing well, which areas we need improvement, and then coming up with a plan on how we would go one by one trying to introduce them into the organization. you got to have leadership who's committed to it uh, first. Once you have that, uh, the resources are already within your company. You're already hiring. Uh, you're already trying to retain employees. Uh, you're already procuring items. It's just a really a matter of giving somebody a roadmap. This playbook is really just a roadmap to make sure that they do that in a way uh, that aligns with what I believe to be is an improvement in terms of how companies operate. 
And that has to come from the top down. And so I think if your top leadership actually believes in this, believes in the programming, believes in what you can do uh, to bring top African-American talent to your organization, then it will flow through the organization. Everybody will believe in it and it can work. This playbook is one of the um, forms or ways to get that information out. The attention that we are getting as we um, partner with the Pirates and the Steelers and, and the Penguins, all of these are letting other people know, hey, this is a viable way to do business and also to be profitable. It's so easy to do business the way we've always done it and, and to do business with people you knew growing up or you went to school with or who have you have a track record with and you trust them. There's just an economic reality in southwestern Pennsylvania right now. We have more jobs than we have people. And that's, that's a, a mind shift for employers and managers across the region because for the past 40 years, we've always had more people than we have had jobs. And so then it was easy to go with the people you know and, and to keep those doors open and other people got left out because you never had enough jobs for all the people. Well, today, we've got lots of jobs in the region, lots of potential, and we don't have the talent coming in uh, to really fill all of those jobs. If you want your company to continue to grow and you know be successful, you have to start looking at our young people and seeing how they are going to be engaged and, and utilized within these different companies. I grew up um, on the north side in between Brighton and Federal Street until uh, my mom had got into some trouble and she was incarcerated. Then my brother had got into some trouble. I took a turn in high school and um, it led me into the streets numerous amounts of times for possession with intent to deliver, manufacture, and deliver a controlled substance. Charges listed long. <laughs> Prior to her release, she made a commitment to change her life around, and, um, and that she did. And she had got clean, and whew, it started making a, a crazy impact in not only her life, but our lives as well. A good friend of mine, his name was Richard Littlejohn. He was shot and killed some of you several years back. That's how I got with, not only in the construction field with Local 373, that's how I got with PJ Dick. PJ Dick has given me one of the biggest opportunities, not only, uh, not only have they employed me and gave me the opportunity to work my way up from being placed in foster care to being placed in placements juvenile detention centers, county jails, state prisons, and a federal holding facility. A seven-time convicted felon? None. Statistically shown, I'm not supposed to be where I'm at. But through along the way, I have had help, counseling, mentors through construction, have got me the opportunity to make a difference in my life and for the families and friends surrounded me. I've been shot. I was shot three times at the age of 15, three days before my 16th birthday. Was in the hospital for about two months. Had to learn to walk again. I grew up in the community seeing, you know, people dealing drugs and, you know, crime and things like that. So I kind of became a product of my environment. I try to suppress it so much. And I guess that's a, I guess it's a trauma thing for me. When, when you make it to this level, it's like, do you want people to know your past? Will they look at you differently? I started my first business, Aaron Gibson Jr. Photography. That was my that was my first real business, 2013. My photography and then consulting business. 
and then add shipping packs. So my consulting business kind of helped me with add shipping pack because of the PO boxes, right? So I help people set up small businesses and do their LLCs and operating agreements and getting them to understand business on a structure level. There's a lot of others that's, you know, come from the same community as me, um, had the same upbringing as me, who never got the chance that I got because they didn't know, one, where to look. Um, they were working dead in jobs and they didn't have the opportunities. There's people who don't get opportunities based off of what they look like. Give these individuals an opportunity to show you that they're worthy. Gotta get more creative. They've gotta work harder at it. But the business case for doing that is it's going to enable their company to thrive and be successful over time. And, you know, I think that's why every employer in the region needs to take this seriously. It's definitely a powerful piece of work. It provides a lot of tools and insight, um, really, that a lot of organizations uh, might not have thought, thought to think that way before. Really, it's, it's about trying to get people to think differently, think outside the box, do things differently in ways that they've never done before. And it's, and it's extremely important work. Don't be overwhelmed. The playbook has many different initiatives. Some are very easy to implement. Some are more complicated and complex that might not apply to you. In fact, there were about three or four that are very specific to education that didn't apply to us. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna look at the other 46 that are there that were phenomenal. And so sometimes it's just simply saying, let me take a look. Even if you get to implement one, you're making a difference. With the assistance of Delvina Morrow, our Vice President of Community Affairs and Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, we have made the document a living document. So instead of it just being static and looking at it, we actually use the playbook as a living, breathing document to assess where we are, where we need to go, what metrics we've met, and what we need to do uh, to increase our efforts. We need options. African Americans should be able to, if I want to get a job at a corporation, yes. But if I want to start a business, yes. So it's important that our people have the, those options. The playbook gives you that roadmap uh, and that ability to think about what you can do to help improve your, your corporate culture. Look, do what you can now. Implement that. You'll begin to see a difference and then take it to the next level. And it truly being not only critical in the Pittsburgh region, but around the nation, because that is our goal. We have a vehicle by which work can get done, how people will be employed, how they, be, how they will be retained and maintained and promoted, how our black businesses will survive, not only survive, but thrive, so that our community will rise, and so will the community at large.